Hi everyone, in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about the moon and why I think it's important that the moon is under Virgo's feet in the Revelation 12 sign and what I believe the moon represents and what I believe the significance of all of this is and of course I just want to say I'm definitely not a prophet and I'm just researching the scriptures and trying to understand them nothing that I'm saying in this video is thus saith the Lord but I just want to share my ideas about the moon and what I believe it represents okay as you may know tomorrow is the new moon it'll be September 20th it's also the first day of the Feast of Trumpets and as you can see when the moon is new it's completely dark and in fact someone had pointed that out and commented that it seems ironic I mean this is not what they said but basically what you know what I began to realize is that it's ironic that the moon will not be visible during the Revelation 12 sign by the 23rd there might be a sliver but it just seems ironic that the moon would be dark at that time and possibly not even visible during the Feast of Trumpets and so I was thinking about the new moon and I was reminded of Amos 8 which is something that I've been wanting to talk about again ever since Passover this actually came up during the Passover season because over here in Amos 8 it says when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit and it was pointed out I believe by Steve Fletcher that in the Hebrew where it says when will the new moon be gone the word for gone actually means Passover so it's saying when will the new moon pass over so you can see that right here and at the time I had done a table I'm not going to pull it up right now but I had done a table on the word Pascha which is Passover in the Greek and that came up in the table in Amos 8 and that word means Passover and in the Greek over here the word that was used and I talked about this around Easter around Passover this word right here it's the word the Alephsete and you can see that right there it's only used one time in the New Testament okay and that's over here it's in Luke 2 35 and as you can see this word means to pierce through or to to go through or pass through and it's in Luke 235 and I'll just show the images because at the time when I had looked this up last year a bunch of images came up so I was curious what the images were all about and that's when I noticed that these are all icons of Luke 235 and this was when Joseph and Mary took the baby Jesus to Simon or Simeon and and Anna and they had prophesied about Jesus and this was on the 40th day of the cleansing that Mary had to go through before presenting Jesus in the temple okay so that might be significant being that the sign of Jonah occurred recently on August 21st or what's considered to be the sign of Jonah and then I had talked about how this word in the Greek it means to pass through or go through is what it's showing now but for some reason when I had pulled it up before it was showing crossing as you can see if you take off the last letter you could see it shows the word cross and if you keep going you'll see that it means a, a crossing because over here it has transit and if you look at the word transit you can see that that also means crossing 
but for some reason it was showing a crossing when I had done it before. I'm not sure why it's not showing that now. But it, in any case, it means to pass over or pass through, and that's what the Exodus was all about. And it's a type and shadow of crossing over into heaven is what all of this is a type and shadow of. But I had also talked about this word Shabar, and this word over here actually connects with Isaiah 66 and the birth of the man child and I'll just show you that it's actually a variation of this word it's the Strong's number before so if I go to the Strong's number before we'll see it in Isaiah 66 Okay, so it's actually verse 9. So again, you have the 666 if you flip that 9 over. But this is, I believe this is all about the mark of the beast. But I'll get into that a little more later. But as you can see, it's the same word that's used over here for the birth. Okay, so in Amos 8, they're talking about selling corn. Okay, so it's saying over here, saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit. And this word is Strong's number 7666. It's the word Shabar, which is the same word that means birth. So I had suggested that they're really talking about the institution of the mark of the beast. And this word actually means to break or to break in pieces. But it also means to bring to the birth, to be broken. As you can see here, you can see that it talks about causing to break through, i.e. that the child shall appear in Isaiah 66, 9. So that's the word Shabar. Strong's number 7666. And over here in the beginning, it's talking about a basket of summer fruit. So we still have a couple of days of summer left. So this could be very significant. The, the new moon is coming up. And if you look at the Strong's for the word new moon, it's 2320. And so the new moon is on the 20th and possibly up until the 23rd which is what's considered to be the Revelation 12 sign. So you see that that means new moon. Okay, so getting back to Isaiah 66, starting from verse 6. So you have 666 here. It says, A voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. I believe this is referring to the formation of the mark of the beast and then over here in verse 7 you see that just before that's instituted the the man or just after it's developed the man child is born probably right before it's instituted and you see that taking place here in verse 7 okay but it's in verse 9 where it talks about the birth and like I said again this could look like the number 666 if you flip over that 9 you have 666 again and God is saying here shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth saith the Lord shall I bring forth and shut the womb saith thy God and so the word Shabar you see that again here means to bring to the birth and so there's two births I believe that are taking place here there's of course the the birth which is Jesus coming back which is the the rapture which is the the bride the man child being born which is Christ and the church but there's also another birth taking place as well at the same time and I believe this is what's being talked about here in Daniel 11 and incidentally it comes up in verses 22 and 23 so over here I'll start with let's see I guess I'll just start 
with verse 21. It says, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flattery. So this is obviously talking about the Antichrist here. And then over here in, in verse 22, it says, And with the arms of a flood, they shall be overflown from before him, and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And so years ago, I was perplexed about who the prince of the covenant would be, because in Daniel 9, it talks about the prince of the covenant, which I've understood to primarily be referring to Jesus, but then again, but then again, there's the false prince, the false messiah, that makes a false covenant as well. So I believe it's talking about both the true prince of the covenant and the false prince of the covenant. But some time ago, I didn't think it could really be talking about either one because it's saying that they shall be broken. But when, once I realized that the word for broken was the word Shabar, and this was years ago, I realized that this could actually be talking about the birth because Shabar means to cause to bring to the birth. That's one of the meanings for Shabar. So it has a dual meaning here. And then in verse 23, because this is all about DNA, it says, and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully, for he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. And this word league actually means to be mixed together, to join or bind together. And it's actually, if you look at it in the Greek, it's actually has the same root word as the word in Daniel 2 when it talks about the iron being mixed with the miry clay. And this is the root word right here. Sina me sound. That's how you would say that. But this word means to mix. In the Greek, it's got the same root word. And so it's coming up in verse 23 because in verse 11, it's all about DNA. So it's talking about the there's a league or a mixing together being made with the prince of the covenant so there's like the faults mixing together the one that doesn't bind or hold that it talks about in daniel 2 and i'll go ahead and show it to you it's in daniel 2 43 and it says and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And if you look at this word for mix in the Greek, it's anatmimenon. And this word mima in the Greek means mixture, mixture. So it's the same root word. They both mean to mix. And so when you look at it in the Hebrew, you'll see that it means to mix, join together, okay? And that was this word right here, strong 6151 in the Hebrew. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out because there's a new moon coming up. And there was something really interesting that I was just notified about. I was actually just getting ready to do a video and then I got this message by Arthur Prudent and he let me know that there was something very interesting taking place with the moon just yesterday. There was actually, I believe, three occultations. The moon had occulted Venus, Regulus, Mars, and Mercury, actually four occultations altogether, but three planets were occulted plus the star Regulus. And this all happened, I believe, yesterday. And I found the article was over here, and it was interesting that it came up with the number 666 right in the URL code. Notice that right away, but I'll put a link to this article in the description box. But I have a lot more that I want to share about the moon, and I want to explain what I believe it has to do with this pattern over here, as well as the pattern was developed by Leland Jones, which is 
this pattern over here. I want to explain how I believe this matches up with the blood moon pattern over here, but I'll have to explain that in the next video since I'm about out of time. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.